In today's series, we're going to be looking at factoring trinomials using a method that requires absolutely no guessing. It's built off of the well-known method, the AC method, but I add one little extra step that avoids all the guessing involved. The easiest way to see this is to do it by an example. So I've cooked up an example that factors so you can see what happens. Here, we're going to try to factor 6x squared minus 7x minus 3. Now, one thing I want you to notice about this is that I've set up a polynomial here that has a non-1 coefficient in the x squared. Most factoring methods argue that it's easier to factor if there's a 1 in front here, but it turns out this method works just the same, exactly the same difficulty, whether there's a 1 or something else there. And so this is also kind of an advantage to using the AC method this way. It avoids any of the extra difficulty introduced by having a coefficient here. The reason why it's called an AC method is that usually we write trinomials when we don't know the coefficients this way. So the AC part is supposed to help you remember to take the product of the the first and last term here, this a times the c. In this case here, we'd be looking at six times negative three. It's important to recognize that you keep the sign with it. All these subtractions are really adding negatives anyway, and so these minuses are attached glued to that number to their right. So here we're going to take a look at the AC product, the 6 times the negative 3, and we're going to get negative 18. Now I want to keep track of the sign, but I'm not going to worry about it for now. Whether it's positive or negative, just think of the number 18 for now. The trick here and what makes any AC method work is that what you're going to look for is factors of this number here that add to the middle number. Now the tricky part here that a lot of factoring methods kind of just gloss over is that they say just use one of those factors but they don't really talk about how to find them all. And so you end up starting to sort of guess and check. And what happens is if you don't guess the right term, you end up being bad at factoring. And it's kind of not very fair that you can be bad at a problem that you understand how to do just because you weren't good at guessing. So this next step here removes the guessing from it. And I'm going to teach you how to identify every possible factor of 18 so that all you have to do is the checking part. You don't actually have to guess through them. And the best way to do this is to count. So I'll start with the number one and I'll write it down here on the left. One is always a factor of any number. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take one, I'm going to divide 18 by that one and figure out what the remaining factor is. In this case, it's 18. So you see one times 18 gives me 18. So then I go up to the next one, I go to two. See, I'm counting. 18 divided by two is a nine. So two times nine gives me 18. Then I count again, three. Three is a factor. 18 divided by three gives me a six. Then I could try to do four, but 18 divided by four doesn't divide evenly. So I don't write four here because it's not a factor. Then I could count up to five and 18 divided by five also doesn't go in evenly. And so five's not a factor. So four and five, I don't need to list because they're not factors of 18. The next number that I should try is six, but six is already on the board. As soon as you get to a number that's already on the board, you are done and you have found every possible pair of integer factors of that number. The reason why is actually simple. If a number bigger than six worked, it would have to work with a number smaller than three and we already checked all of them. So these guys here are the three factor pairs that produce 18. Now here's where the sign comes in because we don't actually want to get 18, we want to get negative 18 out of this. And that means that the numbers here have to have opposite signs in order to produce a negative product. So one of these has to be positive and one of them has to be negative. And I don't know which one. So that actually kind of doubles the number that I have here because I could have negative one and 18 or one and negative 18. But ultimately, all I have to do is find one of these pairs and they have to have opposite signs. And what I'm looking for is the pair of numbers that adds to negative seven. Make sure you include the sign. Looking over here and keeping in mind that each of these factor pairs have to have opposite signs, can you see which one adds to negative seven. Hopefully you noticed that two and negative nine will add to negative seven. But even if you didn't notice that at first, you actually have a complete list here. So you just try it. You'd have 18 minus one, which gives you 17. One minus 18, which gives you negative 17. Then you could try nine minus two, which gives you seven or two minus nine, which gives you negative seven. You're like, oh, I got it. As soon as you find it, you can stop. You don't need to keep going. But you could go through each one of these. And if none of them work, it's actually evidence that this thing does not factor. So that's another advantage that is that you'd have a way of writing down work to show and prove that something doesn't factor instead of just guessing and saying, I couldn't figure it out. So let's take our pair of factors 
this here, that work, the two and the negative nine. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna rewrite the negative seven X in terms of these guys. So keep your six X squared, you won't change that, but I need to write negative seven X in terms of this sum here. So I'm gonna put an X on each of these because it's the same type of number this guy is. And I'll write it like this, plus two X minus nine X minus three. Now you'll notice here that the middle two terms here, two X minus nine X reduces to negative seven X. And that's actually the trick that we're trying to do. We were sort of trying to unreduce it to get it into this scenario here. If you have picked this term correctly, this set of four numbers is guaranteed to factor by grouping. That means we're gonna group the first two terms together. So I'll put a parenthesis around them. The second two terms I wanna to group together too, but I have to be a little careful when there's a minus sign here. That minus in the middle is glued to the nine. So if I were to put the parentheses in front or between the nine and the minus, I'd actually be ungluing that negative and making it distribute to the other guy, which wouldn't be correct. So when I see that negative in the middle, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of it and change it into what it means, which is adding a negative nine X and then I'll group. See how I've got that negative still glued to the nine X. Now here, what I'll do is I'm gonna look at this and see what common factors they have. In this case, both terms have a two in the coefficients, but they also have an X. So I'm gonna factor that two X out. When I take a two X out of here, I have to divide by the thing I took out. So six X squared divided by two X is a three X plus two X divided by two X, which is just one. And you can see that if I distributed that back in, I get to that guy up there. Now here, you'll notice that both coefficients have a three in it, but I wanna also make sure that I keep positive coefficient in the first term. So I'm not just gonna to take out a three here. I'm also going to take out a negative. So I'm going to take out a negative three overall. So when I do that, I have a plus negative three, which if you want, you can rewrite as just minus three. And then I divide this by what I took out. Negative nine X divided by negative three is three X. Negative three divided by negative three is positive one. Now something interesting happens. Both terms have a three X plus one in them. So that's a common factor that they have. And I can factor that out as well. So I get a three, 3x plus one out in front. Here I have 2x times that thing divided by that thing. So that thing's gonna cancel and I end up with a 2x as my first term. Same thing happens here when I divide this term by the 3x plus one, the 3x plus one cancels and I just get the plus negative three, which is just minus three. And that right there is the factored form of that thing up there. And it didn't require any guessing because we eliminated that by doing a list. It only required the checking part. So hopefully that gives you a pretty good idea on how to do this. In the next episode in this video series, we're gonna look at a couple of examples that are on the easy side of factoring so that we can kind of get some practice with this. If you'd like to check that video out, you can click here. Or if you're interested in some more general fun math content, you can see that here. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to Scholar sauce and we'll see you next time.